500 million people in 70 languages all around the world. When you first thought about this, 19 years old, is this what you had in mind? Did you see this far into the future, or is it way beyond what you dreamed? Well, it's funny. I mean, when I was getting started, you know, with my roommates in, in college, you never think that you could build this company or anything like that, right? Because, I mean, it's just, I mean, we were college students, right? Yeah. And we were just building stuff because we, we thought it was cool. I do, I do remember having these specific conversations with my friends where we thought, you know, someone is going to build this. Someone is going to build something that makes it so that people can stay connected with their friends and their family. But no way would we be the ones who were contributing to kind of leading the whole Internet in this direction. So these but that's what he's doing, leading the whole Internet in his direction. In a nondescript T-shirt at a nondescript desk, Mark Zuckerberg runs a vast global empire with the world's largest population after China and India. I first met him three years ago at Facebook's old graffitied building in downtown Palo Alto. The company has since decamped to giant hangars nearby to accommodate their explosive growth. The graffiti is largely gone, except for one word you just can't miss. I see hack everywhere. Mm -hmm. Hack. It has a, a negative connotation, doesn't it? Well, we say hacker. Um, there's this whole definition that, that engineers have for themselves where it's very much a compliment when, when you call someone a hacker, where to hack something means to build something very quickly, right? In one night, you can sit down and you could churn out a lot of code and at the end you have a product. Which is what he expects from his 500 engineers. As we walk through, we got a sense of high-level competition, whether it's writing code into the night or taking breaks to play speed chess. It's a constant game of one-upsmanship. <laughs> you have hackathons. Yeah, and hackathons <laughs> are these things where just all of the Facebook engineers get together and stay up all night building things. And uh, we just have this and you culture. Too. I, I do too. And I mean, usually these hackathons, I, I code too, just uh, alongside everyone. And As he spoke, I, mean, I remembered his awkwardness from three years ago and how he rarely blinks. But he's far more relaxed now, easier to smile, and noticeably more confident as he tells you about all the new products they keep launching. You're showing us something that no one else has seen yet. Uh, Soon. Very soon, starting <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow, the company will launch a new layout for the heart of the site, every user's profile page. For example, this is Mark's old page, filled with scrapbook-like entries in no order of importance, like Andy Samberg plays me on Saturday Night Live. You have to dig around to get any real sense of who Mark is as a person. This is Mark's new page, which is in effect the Mark Zuckerberg story, or how he wants his friends to see him. His bio information is right up top, with the kind of details he'd tell you if you met him, say, at a bar. I work at Facebook and I spend all of my time there, right? I mean, here are my friends. Um, I grew up in New York and now I live in California, right? Those really kind of basic, important things. Under the bio, his latest photos, posted by him or his friends, it's like a running ticker tape of his life. Every day, a staggering 100 million photos are uploaded onto the site. Lots of photos on the right away. People right love away. photos. Yeah. Photos originally weren't that big of a part of the idea for Facebook, but we just found that people really liked them, so we built out this functionality. A dozen engineers and designers worked on the new page in this war room. Cool. Yeah. Empty plates and toothpaste tubes by their keyboards. They raced against a clock right there, telling them how much time was left to complete each high priority task. We want it to be awesome. They came up with a new section on the left. You can now list the important people in your life. Mom, dad, sister, 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 girlfriend. Another new feature pulls up a history of your relationship with any of your Facebook friends. You can see all the things that you have in common with that person. And it's just like it gives you this amazing connection with that person in a way that the current, the, the, the current version of the profile that we have today just doesn't do. For the oversharers among us, you'll still get the news. Mark just ate an extremely spicy pepper and went to the Harry Potter amusement park with his dad. There's lots more graphics under what's important to you. Mark likes Lady Gaga and epic movies. 
And finally, there's a sports section. He plays tennis and likes the Yankees. But whenever Facebook introduces something new, there are always questions about how it protects about our personal data. Sure. There's a sense that you, after all this time, aren't always above board, and that there's some hidden motive to kind of invade our privacy, take the information, and use it to make money. We, we never sell your information. Advertisers who are using the site never get access to your information. But the new layout does encourage us to reveal more about ourselves on Facebook. Earlier this year, the company also introduced a new button where users can tell Facebook what they like in over 100,000 sites, whether it's a new pair of jeans or a 60-minute story. So the company does compile and control an ever-growing inventory of your likes and interests. And if Facebook itself doesn't sell the information to advertisers, applications or apps that run on Facebook by outside companies have been known to. It's against all of our policies for an application to ever share information with, with advertisers. They do? And then we shut them down if they do. Am I a fuddy-duddy? Yes. By <laughs> my invited to be by asking all these privacy questions. No. Is this Kara Swisher is the editor of All Things Digital, a website about high tech in Silicon Valley. You know, I wonder if Facebook mm -hmm. can exist if it doesn't invade That's privacy. That's right. That's exactly right. So it needs to invade privacy. The issue is transparency, isn't it? How kind of, front yes. they are with the users. That is, I think, Mark's one weakness, and I think that was why he got so nervous in the interview we did. Answer. Okay, you want to take off the hoodie? She's referring to this conference in June where she grilled Mark on privacy in an interview she calls a sweat-a-palooza. So he had, like, flop sweat, and it was really quite disturbing, actually, to watch. She was pushing him to admit that Facebook is misleading about its privacy policies, an issue that comes up time and time again. Now, do we get it right all the time? No, but uh -huh. it's something that we take really seriously, and you know, every day we come to work and just try to do a good job on this. And yet you've got the FTC looking into it. You have members of Congress looking into it. There have been privacy groups who have lodged uh, formal complaints. You've hired a lobbyist in Washington to deal with this, so uh, you know it's a problem. Well, I think that this it's a really important thing for everyone to just be thinking about. I mean, privacy and making sure that people have control over their information is, I think, one of the most fundamental things on the Internet. It's become even more important as Facebook introduces one new product after the next. So yeah. These are all just like engineering teams. These guys work on the platform, which is how... 28-year-old Chris Cox is head of product development. He sits across the desk from Mark and thinks about what next for Facebook. This is, this is how close we sit. And increasingly, he's thinking outside your desktop. How many people actually access Facebook through their mobile devices? I think the latest number is over 200 million. So, so in other words, that's obviously the future. I think it's a huge part of the future. Is Facebook developing a phone device like Apple did iPhone? No, we're working on, on, on building software that can be used on all phones. Their latest product is Messages, which combines email, cell phone texting, and instant messages into one. They call it the ultimate switchboard. So do you think email will become obsolete? No. Uh, I'm not sure, but what we've found is that more people are using messages or are moving away from email. And so if we build a really compelling experience, I think people are going to switch over, but I'm not going to call the end of anything. Was this directed at Gmail? No. Google's email? No. Because everybody's talking about a, a Gmail killer. It's certainly what everyone's writing about. Google. Yes. Facebook and Google. Yes. Are they on a collision they course? They are indeed. The fight's over what? It's over how? Search. It's all how over search. How people find discovery search. Say you want to buy a car. You can type Prius on Google and get publicly available information. Or you can type Prius on Facebook and get personal advice about it from your friends. Are you trying to turn everything we do on the web into a, a social function? I think what we've found is that when, pro when you can use products with your friends and your family and the people you care about, they tend to be more engaging. I, I think that um, we're really going to see this huge shift where a lot of industries and products are just going to get remade to be social. It's already happening. This year, people spent more time on Facebook than on Google.
So you're out here in Silicon Valley. Can you feel the tectonic plates yes. shifting over? Well, you can over? see the talent shift over. And you can see right. there's been a big war about talent and payments, millions of dollars to keep people, engineers at Google. Mark's number two, Sheryl Sandberg, defected from Google. He recently wooed over the inventor of Google Maps, and he even poached Google's cafeteria chef. There's kind of a talent brain drain from them to you. Something like 200 people who work for you. I mean, I, I, are I do think it's, it's clear. Googlers, there right? are areas where the companies compete. But then there are all these things where we just don't compete at all. It's the mm -hmm. goal for you to conquer the whole internet, to well, own the internet. Well, think about it like this. People, if they can use a product of any category, photos, groups, music, TV, anything, either by themselves or with their friends, mm -hmm. I think most of the time people want to do those things with their friends. So, so is the answer yes? I, I think th on, so, I mean, the answer is that we want to help other people build a lot of these products. He doesn't like to talk about competing with Google, just as he didn't three years ago when I compared him to its founders, Larry and Sergey. You seem to be replacing Larry and Sergey as the people out here who everyone's talking about. You're just.